The problems for my videos can be downloaded from my website, tonybell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link. You'll see there's no sign in, no sign up, nothing like that. Just a hundred plus pages of accounting exercises. Many of the exercises are free and open, about 40%. And if you're working through those and finding you're getting great value out of them, you might consider joining and getting a channel membership that has access to the other 60% of the videos. All right, let's jump into today's exercise. Let's take a look at problem 3-1-A. We're asked to prepare a production report. When I was a student, I never liked this topic because I never got this topic. I just didn't understand it. And maybe that's the position you're in. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what you're up against when you're up against a production report. Big picture. Here's what's happening. We know the cost of a product is the material, the labor, and the overhead. We also know for when we're doing process costing, that's what we're doing here, we don't want to track each individual unit. This company is making, let's see, 90 plus thousand units. We don't want to track every single one, the material, the labor, and the overhead. What we do is we say, okay, well, what was our total material, labor, and overhead for the month? And divide by the number of units. That's essentially what we're doing here. And the challenge is, well, there's lots of little quirks. And so this report helps us work through the quirks together. The big quirk is you'll have half finished units. So how do you deal with those? Well, this table deals with that, that whip that might not be fully complete. Um, Okay, let's jump into the problem and kind of work through it together. All my problems download from TonyBell.com. I'm going to be working off a template in this video. You can also download the template from my website. It should, everything should be linked below. Uh, 318 Production Report. Bertuzzi Tires has three departments. Its first department, the Processing Department, shows the following data for the month of July. So I'm actually going to start with a title before I even read any of the data. Name of our company, Bertuzzi Tires. Name of the report we're preparing, production report, and sometimes it's called the production cost report, uh, processing department. It's important to note the department because we're gonna prepare one of these for every department in our company. If it goes from processing to finishing to packaging, for example, you know, there's different steps that this thing goes through. Each one of those is gonna have its own report. Um, and this is for the month of July. So for the month ended July 31st. Okay. So there's a beautiful title. And in fact, before I jump into the question, let's sort of look at this table and there's two big distinct sections. I, I think there's four steps really, but two really big distinct sections, the top half and the bottom half. When I'm filling in the top half of the report, the yellow half here, I'm looking for units. So as I'm scanning the question, I'm going to be looking for unit stuff. When I look at the bottom half, I'm looking for costs. So I'm looking for dollar amounts. And I can sort of separate the two in my brain. I can go, oh, I'm in the top half. I don't want to look at dollars, right? I don't want to put any dollar numbers in the top half. And when I'm in the bottom half, I don't want to put any well, I, I'm just looking for dollars. That's essentially it. So as I highlight this, I'm going to read through the question. Okay. Bertuzzi tires has three departments. First department shows the following data for July work in process. And it says units in process. So I'll highlight that yellow, right? That's going to be relevant for the yellow section. Now it gives us a stage of completion. Uh, in the intro to the chapter, I had mentioned something. I'd said, you know, a key component here is equivalent units. So if I have, for example, 2000 units and I've done, let's say 50% of the work, 50% complete, the math doesn't work very well. And so for our calculations, we're going to pretend that this is 1000 equivalent units. And so when we're doing calculations, we just treat it as if this 2000 units that are half done, we just treat it as a thousand equivalent units and we just put it in the calculation as, as a thousand. And so we'll do that. And you can see there's funny percent, like that was 50% when there's 80 and 35 and 90 and 60. Um, so that's something whirling around in the back of my mind. Those percentages matter when we have to calculate equivalent units and we will do that. The other quirky thing is, there's equivalent units for materials. There's also equivalent units, it says here, for conversion. 
material, you know, the cost of a product is DM plus DL plus MOH. Material is obviously DM. Conversion is DL and MOH. And isn't that weird that you can have something that's 50% done as to materials, but 80% done as to conversion or vice versa, right? You can have something where the materials are totally done and the conversion is only half done. I think of the half baked cookie, right? I got a cookie, it's in the oven. Well, the materials are 100% there. I don't have half the cookie materials in. Once I put it in the oven, it's done, but the cooking's only half done. So the conversion might be 50 or 60% done. So that's sort of an interesting thing and, and it creates interesting challenges for us in accounting, which is why we may need to make this uh, table. Okay, anyway, that's enough preamble. Let's actually start filling in our table. So units in process, 8,000. These percentages with our beginning whip, right? This is beginning whip. We don't need them for weighted average production reports, which is probably what you're going to prepare first. When you're learning this, you learn weighted average first. If you're working on a FIFO problem, you're in the wrong spot. Problem three, four is FIFO. So if you have to do FIFO in your class, skip ahead to problem three, four, but we'll, we'll focus on weighted average. That's one most people have to learn. And certainly most people have to learn it first because it's easier. Um, so we can ignore these for weighted average. These are needed for FIFO. Uh, costs. Okay. So cost information, I'm going to highlight blue. We got material labor and overhead costs. Those are dollar amounts. I, I, well, I've got the blue highlighter out. I see some costs down here as well. Those are costs in our beginning inventory. These are costs added during the month. And then I see some more units information. I see units started. I see units completed and I see units in process ending with some question marks. So, okay. I've highlighted the stuff yellow that kind of goes on the top. I've highlighted the stuff blue that's going to go on the bottom. Whew, there's a lot of preamble. Well, I think once we get into the question, it's not that bad. It's probably too much setup on my part. Uh, let's start though. Units in units to account for from beginning with, we're going to start by filling in this physical unit section. That's going to be step one here. Uh, so units to account for from beginning work and process, it's this, I'm looking for yellow numbers there, whip beginning units in process, 8,000. So 8,000 is my number. Units started, again, I'm looking for yellow numbers, units, there's one called units started, let's go with that, 94,000. 8,000 plus 94,000, my total units to account for. 8,000 plus 94,000, it's 102. Now, I've done this a few times, you haven't, but I have the advantage of knowing, oh, this total units to account for 102 has got to match this total units accounted for. This has got to be 102. And that's going to serve us well in a second because units completed and transferred out is 92. And often you'll be given this ending whip number. In this case, we weren't given our ending whip which is what we're looking at here. That's our missing number in our Excel, right? Ending whip, we're, we're looking for that number. It's question marks in the, um, in the question. We can fill in the blank. Often you'll just be given the number and you can say, okay, yeah, it worked. Here I gotta say, well, I know it's got a total to 102. I'm sitting at 92. What's the number gotta be? Fill in the blank. It's gotta be 10,000 units. So again, I haven't used a dollar amount and we're underway. So this is the first step, just getting that little reconciliation at the top, total units to account for, total units accounted for. On to equivalent units. I'm going to fill in here. So the equivalent units completed and transferred out, it's sort of like the cookies you wouldn't call it completed unless it was 100% complete, right? We said 2000 units, 50% complete. That's equivalent of a thousand units. Well, 92,000 units, if I completed and transferred out, I must've done all the material. I must've done all the labor and overhead, the conversion. Uh, so this has got to be 100% complete. So 92,000 times 100%, it's fully complete as to material, 92,000 times 100%, it's fully complete as to conversion. So you just write that number across because it's complete. Our ending whip though has some percentages. It says our ending whip is 90% complete as to material. So I, if I have 10,000 units on the go and I'm 90% done, that's the equivalent of having 10,000 times 
90%, that's the equivalent of having 9,000 units that are fully complete. So we use that number for our calculations. For conversion, and remember, conversion is just material, not material, sorry, it's a labor plus overhead to give us our total uh, you know, material, labor, and overhead. That's been a theme of our class. Our conversion here is 60%. So we have 10,000 units that are 60% complete. 10,000 times 60% is 6,000 units. My equivalent, so the total physical units are 102,000 units. For material, I've done 101,000 units worth of work. In other words, I gotta add some more work to those last couple thousand units and for conversion i've done ninety-eight thousand equivalent units of work that's what we're saying here this is a key number for our future calculations and we're done the yellow section so this whole bit just never oops let's see if i can make that work yeah this whole bit that i'm filling in maybe i'll shade it uh black like it just never gets filled in. Like those will just be blank. Uh, when you do FIFO method, you fill more of it in, but for, for weighted average, no, that's it. Okay. So we've done the top half. Uh, you'll see in future problems, I'll go much more quick, but I'm trying to explain it as we go. Cost to account for dollar amounts. We're looking for dollar amounts. So cost beginning whip under direct materials. Let's see cost beginning whip and cost and in beginning inventory materials, one ten five hundred. 110500 conversion costs it's labor and over at 33 and 26 so plus 33000 plus 26000 it's 59000 so material labor and overhead the total cost material plus conversion which is labor and overhead is 169500 Costs incurred, that's these blue highlights halfway down the page, uh, 950, right? Costs added to production during the month for material, 950. For labor and overhead, 310 plus 170, 480. Now I just need totals. 950 plus 480, 1430. 110 plus 950, 100. 060 500 59 plus 485 39 and totaling across 1599 500. Okay, so those are just totaling the blue numbers essentially, just giving different totals to them. Uh, cost per equivalent unit this is the most important line on the table, at least as far as I'm concerned. It's the most interesting one as a manager. You made a hundred thousand units approximately during the month. What was the cost? Well, the material cost, so you take the cost, a million bucks, divide by the equivalent units, 101. So it's a million, 106,500, divided by 101,000, and you get a cost per unit, right? That's the cost per equivalent unit, total costs, divided by total equivalent units, it's 10.5. Now you see I, in Excel, I've, I've left like a bunch of decimals. You'll often get a long, weird decimal answer. What I would say to you is more is better. Take as many decimals as you think is reasonable, at least three though. You know, so I, that's why I leave so many in Excel just for other questions where the answer is not so easy as 10.5. Uh, let's do the cost per equivalent unit for conversion, 539 divided by 98, 5.5. And our total cost, 1599 divided by, oh no, there's nothing to divide by. How do I get a total here? I just add them. 10.5 plus 5.5, it's $16. So what does this tell me? Well, it tells me I'm Bertuzzi tires, the processing department, when the stuff comes through the processing department, the processing department's cost per unit coming out of there is $16. So it's useful to know how much your stuff costs and you, we would go department to department to department and add up the costs as we go. And we'd say, oh, this is what it costs us to make our product. So this is what the processing department adds to it. We got two more de departments to add on afterwards and they're gonna add on their cost. And at the end of it, we're gonna have our, our our internal cost on the tire. That's not the price we charge to the customer. That's what it costs us to make the tire. Now, 
it's important to remember, why do we do this? We made 102,000 tires. We're not going to track each one individually. We're going to say during the month, I made 100,000 tires. During the month, I had $1.6 million in costs. So it cost me $16 a tire. Real companies, this number is not going to be 16. It's going to be 15.972463. But, you know, we're doing this the first time. It's nice to have the numbers work out evenly. Okay, uh, so that's the key number, but we got one more step to do, and it's a little reconciliation at the bottom that feeds an important journal entry. Uh, here's the reconciliation at the bottom. It says cost of units completed and transferred out. I take my cost, 10.5 for materials, multiply by completed and transferred out, 92,000. I take my cost, my computer froze. Hopefully it unfreezes. There it goes, 5.5. I multiply by completed and transferred out, 92. I add these two together. Okay, so then I do the same thing here, cost and ending whip. I take my cost, I multiply by the units ending whip, 9,000. So 10.5 times 9,000 is 94,500. 5.5 times 6,000 ending whip. So again, cost and ending whip. I take the cost per unit times the ending whip. So times 6,000, I add these together. The one thing left to do is to add down 966 plus 94 is 1060, 506 plus 33 is 539, and 1472 plus 127 is 1599. What we notice is these numbers, let me unhighlight everything. Uh, no fill? Yeah. So these two numbers match at the start. And these two whole rows match at the bottom. And so if you did it right, and, and it's important, the less you round, the more accurate this is going to be. Uh, we didn't round at all, so the numbers match perfectly. If you don't round at all, these numbers have to match perfectly, mathematically. You did something wrong if those aren't matching. I think the key number on the whole table is this one that I'm highlighting in orange. Cause again, if you're the manager of this department, you want to know what your costs are, right? Like that's, you are probably in charge of keeping costs down and, and you're, you're wanting to uh, monitor this number very closely. It's a useful and important number for the company. One last thing to do, we've done the question. So the question said, prepare a production cost report. That's what this is, this is a production report. We've done it, good job by us. Just as a little bonus, sometimes I ask my students to do the journal entry to transfer out completed goods. And that's this, uh, maybe I'll highlight this in blue. Uh, this blue highlighted line. So here's the journal entry. If you're asked, um, we credit whip for this department, uh, processing department, oops, processing department for 1472,000, just that number right there, what we completed and transferred out. And we debit WIP inventory for the next department. Whatever the next department is, is it the packaging department? Often the question will tell you, oh, it goes from this department to that one to that one. Well, whatever the next department is, it just, what was our WIP and we finished it becomes the WIP of the next department. So we debit WIP for the next department. So sometimes you will be asked for that journal entry. There are some other quirky journal entries you might be asked, but that's by far the most common. And there we go. We've finished 3-1-A. If you made it to the end, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.